Hi, my name is Angela Figueredo, and I'm going to be doing my district profile on Fillmore Unified School District. This is for course Education 590 for University of Laverne. Some school sites that we could see in Fillmore Unified School District are Mountain Vista Elementary School, Rio Vista Elementary School, San Catayano Elementary School, and Piru Elementary School. These are the four primary education school sites that we see within their district. Moving on to the secondary education, there are also four more school sites. They are Fillmore Middle School, Sierra High School, Fillmore High School, and Fillmore Adult School. A little quick overview about Fillmore Unified School District is that it has eight total schools. There are a number of 3,757 students, which includes 162 teachers leaving a student-teacher ratio for 23 to 1. So most of the enrollment or the minority enrollment in Fillmore Unified School District is 93% Hispanic, which is more than the California state average of 76%. Also, the student-teacher ratio of 23 to 1 is actually considered less than the state average of 24 to 1. So it actually has a benefit of having smaller class size. The demographic information in Fillmore shows that there are 6.3% um, students that are white, 92.1% that are Hispanic or Latino, 29.2% that are English learners, and of those students, 746 receive free or reduced meals. There are also 474 students that currently hold IEPs. Looking at the student population, we could see over here that in the enrollment of the 3,751 students, 76.5% of those students are socioeconomically disadvantaged. So there's a very high rate of a lower socioeconomic status within this community. There's also 29.2% English learners, as we stated before, and of all the student population, there's also a foster, pop, foster youth population of 0.4%. Taking a look at the API, API scores, which actually measures academic growth, we could see that all schools within FUSD receive Title I funds. Based on the report on the CDE website, Fillmore High School did increase its API score from 724 in 2009 to 732 in 2010. Even though they did meet the API score school-wide, including for subgroups of Hispanic, Latino, and socioeconomically disadvantaged students, they still failed to meet the targets for English learners. So, FHS has actually failed to make AYP for two years, and therefore it is now identified as a year one in program, program improvement. Program, program improvement is actually a state program that oversees schools, districts, and county boards that receive federal Title I funds when they do not make AYP for two consecutive years. So once this occurs, the school is now identified as in PI. And over here, it's the chart looking at the school progress report for Fillmore Unified School District. And according to the CDE, FUSD schools scored as the follows. Um, and you could see that there's been an increase of 0.8 for Fillmore High School, as we stated before, but there's been a decrease of negative eight for Fillmore Middle School. Um, the Sierra High School has increased a bit, so that's good. Uh, and some of the elementaries have made some improvements as well. Um, however, one elementary in particular did fall behind. So I'm sure that there were some goals and targets made for that school to improve the following year. Some AYP scores, or which is the proficiency on state assessments for FUSD, include targets for the 2009 and 2010 school year with the hopes that 56% of students were going to test proficient or above in English language arts, in addition to 56.4% of students testing proficient or above in mathematics. Um, even though they set this as a target goal, 
the results indicated they were only able to have 40.8% of students test proficient or above in English language arts and 38.4% tested proficient or above in mathematics. So these results did not meet the AYP targets they had set out for 2009 to 2010. So let's take a look more further into um, how their English language proficiency did for English language learners. In 2009-2010, out of 1,105 English learners that were tested, 29%, which is 320 students, tested proficient or above. However, 71% or 785 students did not test proficient. So um, there's a big concern here with uh, English language learners and how we are going to help them in the Fillmore Unified School District. Um, later on, about five years later, FUSD had set a target for those students that had been in the same EL cohort for five or more years. They wanted them to test 50.9% proficient or above. The results indicated that there was an increase <clears throat> to 54.4% that tested proficient or above. So there was a small increase seen in the English language proficiency over a five year span, which is actually a good thing, but uh, we'd probably like to see a little bit more. Career and college readiness. FUSD in 2013 to 2014 had a 15.7% college ready um, score for the students that showed they had met the, the criteria for UC and Cal State University course requirements. Um, in the following year, there was actually an increase um, for 2014-2015 school year that went up to 31.2% for college readiness, um, meeting the USC and Cal State University course requirements. So there was a, a quite a bit of increase there on improving their college readiness and how it was seen over the period of two years that was tested. So there is some improvement going on in the college readiness, but 30%, I mean, I'm sure we'd love to see a higher percentage of students feeling more ready to go to college out of the district. Um, I conducted an interview with a teacher in kindergarten at Fillmore Unified School District and she had actually given me some really helpful information about the community. She's been teaching for uh, about 20 years. I asked her, what are some of the defining characteristics of the district? And she said it's a small community near farmland. It has a high population of English language learners and it's a growing district with families to serve. Um, there's a lot of new development with homes being built, which is why there was a, a recent uh, change with some schools added. Two elementary schools got added, uh, she stated. So I also asked her, what is the demographic comp composition of the district? And she stated that a majority of the student population is ELs and that a high population of students come from a lower socioeconomic status, as we saw earlier in the data I presented. Um, I asked her, what are the recent financial trends of this community? And she said, there's a lot of funding going towards technology, such as with iPads and laptops, they're trying to get for all classrooms, um, including the kindergarten classrooms, which I thought was really neat. Um, she said, there's an increased technology in the classroom with even putting smart boards instead of whiteboards. So all classrooms now have smart boards. And she said there's a funding now going towards new curriculum projects, such as with the new math program that they adopted called Swan Math. Some recent changes in the district that I had mentioned earlier is that two uh, new schools were added, Mountain Vista and Rio Vista. And also, as I stated before, there's more money being spent on technology, which is really good. There's also population growth, as Ms. Barrington had stated. There's new homes being developed, which is gonna bring new uh, students into the community. And uh, there's more emphasis on safety. There's gates now being put up around the schools. Trainings are now being provided for teachers, such as the active shooter trainings um, in case they have a lockdown. 
There's also um, all schools are now having preschools as of 2017, 2018 school year, which is really great because uh, it's pushing for that early intervention uh, for those students who in prior years probably never went to preschool. Um, there's also new math programs piloted, such as this one math, which is what Ms. Barrington stated. So after taking a look at the district profile for Fillmore Unified School District, I'd have to say that their strengths are, there's a strong focus on technology um, being put into the classroom. And there's also a high importance of early intervention being put on the inclusion of preschool programs throughout all their school sites, which is really great. Um, the class size and the student teacher ratio is pretty low. So I'd say that allows for more personalized instruction um, some weaknesses, though, that I think are areas that the district needs to improve on is there's a lack of proper support for improving English language proficiency, as you could see in the data that was presented uh, before. It seems like they're making small improvements with their English language proficiency, but it would probably be better if they could be finding a, a program or a system that would get them making more higher percentage gains. Um, there's also a lack of consistent and beneficial curriculum that is promoting success on the state assessments. As you saw in the um, state report for FUSD, it seems like they're still not meeting the API and AYP criteria. So um, they're setting their targets, but it would be better if they could find a curriculum that could promote them meeting their goals um, better than they are currently. There's also a lack of a strong college preparation and readiness program. It seems like there's a high focus on technology and focusing on the early intervention, but now we have to take a look at the students that are getting ready to go to college. And um, I think creating a program that reaches out to um, students even from middle school, high school might help them get that started. So um, some recommendations that I have for the district is I feel they should adopt a new English language arts and phonics curriculum. They already did so with the math curriculum. Now it's time to take a look at English language arts and phonics development. So um, I think they should adopt a curriculum that will support all students, including English language learners, so that they can perform higher on assessments. Um, I also feel that the district could benefit from introducing and focusing on mastery of basic English language arts and mathematical skills prior to setting those higher expectations um, for a demographic that is not ready, such as the one that they have. They have a lower socioeconomic demographic, um, a lot of socio uh, economically disadvantaged students, foster youth, that are probably not ready to take those state assessments. And um, they probably didn't even go to preschool. So um, now that they have the preschool programs, I think it would be really great that they start to expose their students to basic English language arts and math skills, such as through simple singing phonics songs, counting objects, and sorting objects by color, and making those uh, basic skills a priority in their preschool programs now. Um, I think another recommendation that would help them is developing an outreach program or a college preparation course uh, that would be required by uh, students in both middle school and high school and uh, they could attend, you know, assemblies or take a, a class on learning the importance of college and career readiness in order to obtain success for the future and really prepare themselves to do well in their classes so that they can strive to want to go to college and um, achieve their goals in the careers that they want to do. So those are my recommendations and um, here are my references on my district profile for Fillmore Unified School District. I hope you enjoyed my presentation. And once again, my name is Angela Figueredo, and thank you for taking the time to listen to the information I had on Fillmore Unified School District. Bye-bye.